You are listening to this message from Jesus Pavilion, part of the RCCG network. We hope God will meet your need after listening to this message. we thank you for another opportunity to come to the throne of grace, to come to the throne of mercy. Who is there like unto thee? There is no one we can compare with you. There is no one we can compare you with. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are the Jehovah God. We just want to bless your holy name. We want to bless your wonderful name. We want to thank you for a time as days. We want to appreciate you for a time as days. We thank you for even this week being an evangelism week, which means you are telling us that it is still relevant, most especially in this period where we are, because it is a period where it is um, peculiar, unprecedented for every one of us. And we know that it is a period where you want to do something wonderful in the life of your people and the life of your church. Go ahead and do what you alone can do. We give you glory in the name of Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the people of the Lord say, Amen. If you have your Bible, please, can you turn to John chapter 3, verse 16. The book of John chapter 3, verse 16. I know that we know this scripture of heart, being a Bible uh, student ourselves. But that does not mean that we shouldn't read it the way we are meant to read it and see what the Bible says concerning this scripture. John chapter 3 verse 16 is a popular scripture. Go ahead if you are there to read it for me. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him may not be lost but have eternal life. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. You see, we will not understand this scripture except we personify it. What do I mean by personification? It is a type of metaphor and commonly a literary tool, which means it is when you assign the quality of a person to something that isn't human or that isn't even alive, like nature or motions. It is a method of describing something that others can easily understand it. So for you and I to understand what evangelism or mission is all about, you need to have the understanding of John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I think most sermon on John 3, 16 always talk about the giving of God's Son. But there are prior phrases that you and I need to look at because what they refer to is actually the death of Christ upon the cross. And I don't think that is what he's talking about, in my own opinion. I'm not a theologian. I only study theology. There are people that are theologians, and they stand to take each of the Bible to unravel it, to unpack it, to make sure that they are able to defend each statement. That is not what I'm concerned about. What I am concerned about is looking at this scripture, and looking at the way we refer to it at the cru- uh, crucifix or crucifixion of Christ. And certainly, I don't think, I think it's the culmination of God giving his son 
But God giving his son is not limited to crucifixion. Rather, it includes our Lord incarnation and his earthly ministry, his climaxing, the climaxing of the whole thing is crucifixion. So for God gave and compassed everything. It's not just about crucifixion. It's not just about his death. So why do we make this observation or why do I make this clarification? Because I believe that the way you communicate your love for someone is to show them you love them, not just tell them that you love them. How do I mean by that? God demonstrated his love for us by doing what? By showing us that he loved us, by doing what? By showing that he, and he gave us. He didn't just say, I love the world. He gave something for the world in exchange to be able to uh, acquire the world, to be able to do what? To be able to accommodate the world, to be able to do what? To be able to bring the world nearer to him. And that is why I'm saying to you, my brother, my brethren and sister, my brothers and sisters, my brethren, to say, please, whatever you do, make sure that you are on the plan of God. When you are communicating love, you have to communicate it in action, not in words only. Actions speak louder than voice. That's what they say. Telling someone of your love for him or her without a corresponding demonstration of that love is much as a noise. You are just making noise. You are just talking. Jesus was sent to suffer and bleed and die for our sins, to be sure. But he was also sent to love sinners, thereby convincing sinners that he and therefore God loves every sinner. Jesus did not condemn people. He never said, you don't belong to my kingdom. He never said, you don't know what I'm talking about. He loves us equally. And actually, this is my fear. Because Jesus loved us equally. Are we equally loving ourselves? Are we equally loving our brothers? Are we equally loving our friends? Are we equally showing love to those that come to us? Are we usually demonstrating God's love for others? Are we usually are we equally telling them that because Jesus, because God loves you, I've got no choice but to love you as well? Are we telling them that look and listen to me? God loves you, yes, and I love you as well. This is what we need to demonstrate. This is what we need to share. This is what we need to show people. This is how we need to communicate God's love. It's not by talking. It is not, it's just by action. Your action is what God is looking for. Because when Jesus died, he died for sinners. He died for the blind. He died for the blame. He died for everybody. It's not just that he died for those that are perfect. In fact, much more than that alone, he said that he came for those that are not perfect, not good for those that are perfect. That is why he spoke and he said, those that are healed does not need the doctor, but those that are unwell, those are the ones that need the doctor. So which means he came to show everybody how we are meant to evangelize, how we are meant to do his mission, how we are meant to bring people into his kingdom. He loved the rich as much as he loved the poor. He loved the diseased sinner. He loved the possessed sinner. He loved the Jew. He loved the Gentile. He loved sinners that are men. He loved sinners that are women. He loved children as well. He loved them all without any compromise. That he loved them almost proved that God loved them all. And on that basis, John, John was saying, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There are three things that we need to quickly look at in this verse. Number one, our persuasion, our persuasion. I am persuaded that John 3.16 was written to persuade Christians, you and I, to do what? To love, to, that God loved the world, that God gave love to everyone, that God loves Gentiles as well as Jews. This is our persuasion. God loved the world and we should love the world. God loved everyone. We should love everyone. God loved the Gentile as well as Jew. There should be no discrimination in our love. The church people like to love people that go to church. People that are in the pub, drinking, we see them as a sinner. We, we call them all sort of names. When they ask for our help, we don't give them because we look at it and said uh, the food that is meant for the son is not meant for the dog. Who told you that the dog tomorrow cannot become his son? 
We need to learn to give each other a chance. So such a notion was difficult for the Jew to accept. Yes, in those days in the grave, but it is persuasiveness of this verse that it was properly understood. If you understand John 3, 16, you will know that there are so many things that you and I are doing wrong. I remember during the evangelism training we had in around March, before the lockdown, was it March? Yeah, before the lockdown. One thing that paramount that they train us was show them Jesus' love. It doesn't matter what you are doing. It's just about God loves you. So, And this is what the world wants to hear. Somebody love them. Even when you are joking with people to say, I love you, you will see the way they will smile. The world is full of agony. The world is full of pain. The world is full of uh, uh, discomfort. But when you give the word, and they can see the genuineness of that word coming from you to say, I love you. Honestly, people believe you. Praise God. Praise God. So you do not have to agree with my opinion that John did not actually write or wrote John 3.16 himself. No, 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 no. That Jesus did not speak that word. That John wrote that chapter. But somehow, somehow, the, the canons that comes together to put the Bible together, they make that to be the word of Jesus. But I don't think so. I think it was a revelation that John caught that no one is able to understand it. Because if you are reading the Bible that is, 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 is printed in color, it should be in red. And it's not. Because the red signifies the word that comes out of Jesus. I don't believe that Jesus says that word. This is me. This is my argument. But one thing that he does for me, he persuaded me with understanding that if God can love the world, I am to love the world. If God loves all the people, I am to love all the people. If God does love, I have to show that same love to sinner. I am persuaded by that to help the sinner. My next two, uh, sorry, the second point is my passion. The first one is persuasion. The second one is my passion. It is going to be our passion, not just my passion. When you are loved by someone, and you know that you are loved by someone, you love them in return. Do you not? When, you're, when, you're, when your spouse, before you got married, came to you and was asking you out, and gradually you could see the way he's showing love to you. You, you. you reciprocate by showing that love back, that this one is nice to me, let me be a bit nicer. And gradually, you become naked together. And this is what he is saying to you and I. You love everyone that loves you back in return. According to First John chapter 4, verse 19, he said we love him because he first loved us. We can proclaim that we love Jesus now, but don't ever forget that he's the one that first loved us. So when you know that God loves you, then you will love God back, right? Am I right? Am I talking to you? Am I communicating? Do I make sense that when somebody loves you, you love them back? But what does it mean to love God? Second John chapter 6, say, 2 John 6, say, And this is love, that we walk after his commandment. We obey his commandment. We obey his teaching. We do what he has asked us to do. That is love. That is the demonstration of our love to him. Nothing more. For God love us is for God to give us his son. But for us to love God is to obey his commandment. So it's, it's like give and take. I give you my son because I love you. And if you want to demonstrate your love back to me, you have to obey my commandment. And you and I know the commandment of God to do what to love one another, even when it is not comfortable, even when it is not convenient. Everyone that said they are in love and they don't tell me, they pay a price for that love, they are lying. There's something that love will take away from you, no matter how small, no matter how big. And these are the value that you hold uh, dear to yourself. But when you start going out with your spouse, he start telling you that, you know, one thing that I really don't like is the way you are doing it. And this is what you value to be something of importance to you. And that love that you have for her will make you give it up. I say, if that's, that is the barrier, I, I'm ready to give it up. 
including changing names. I've seen people that change their name because the one they love doesn't like the surname. They change the name. And we pay all sort of price for loving somebody. Our passion, therefore, is if we know that God loves us, and if we, in turn, love God, is a passion to serve Him. Now let's mix this up. In response, his children love him and show their love for him by obeying his commandment. Are you with me so far? Are you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? That he has given us his son. But the only thing that you and I need to pay as a price is to just obey his commandment and to, to be able to show that we love him. So what happened then when you find out that only does God love you or that not only does God love you, but that he loves those who are not his children also? One thing that uh, amazed me that we really, really came out during the evangelism training was when people were saying, oh, I made a mistake. My colleague at work, we asked me to pray for them, but because they are Hindu, or because they are Muslim, or because they are this, or because they are that, or because they don't believe in God, or because they say, I don't do Jesus, and as a result, I won't pray for them. And people are now repenting and now realize the mistake that they have made by not praying for them, by not actually ask God to help them, by not actually do what to show them love, because that is what it simply means. If we continue to go and look for Christians, to invite them on the platform, yes, they, they, they will come, but don't forget that they have their church. So whatever you do, um, no matter how good your message is, if they still have the loyalty with their church, they will still go back to their church. But when you go out to the world, to that woman that doesn't do crime, to that one that doesn't serve God, to that one that have no knowledge of God, and you persuade them by persuasion, by showing them love, by calling them, by texting them, by dragging them, by connecting them, by downloading the apps for them so that it will be easier for them to connect. By the time they come, who knows that Holy Spirit might minister to them and then they will give their life to Christ. What happens when you find out that the rich that you are calling all sort of name, God loves them as much as he loves the poor? He loves the dumpster, the difficult man that is walking the streets of London, those that are begging for money, he loves them. Those that are the dead as a result of this pandemic, does that mean God doesn't love them? He loves them. It is unquestionable in his action, brethren, which brings me to the third one, which means performance. You cannot love somebody without performance. You must show it. John 3, 16 said that God love is not dominant. It's, sorry, it's not dominant. Not dominant. It's not dominant. It's not step. It's not stagnant. That's the word I'm looking for. But it moves into action. I love the world. What else can I do for the world to be able to communicate my love, to be able to show them my love? And it is something profound, unprecedented, that we haven't seen before, that we haven't heard before, that somebody has an only son. And he said, go and rescue the world from the hand of the Satan. That's why that you are the one that invited Satan in to come and rule us in the first instant. Praise God, somebody. Are you blessed so far? So as a Christian, our Lord should operate in much more the same way by moving us to action and obeying and obedient to God. By this, God will know that we are his children. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to 21. I know it's a long scripture, but we will read it. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 21. It says, For it is Christ's love that fuels our passion and motivates us because we are absolutely convinced that he has given his life for all of us. This means all died with him. I'm reading a passion translation, TPT, the passion translation. It was Christ's love that fueled our passion. So why do you think we go on mission? Why do you think we allow mosquito to bite us? It is Christ's love. One of my brother was asking me, do I have uh, mosquito medicine at home? I said, yes, I do. And he was shocked. 
Why? Because every time I go to India, I have to take uh, 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 anti-malaria simply because of the bite of the mosquito in the village that we are sleeping. Anytime I go to Venezuela, I've had the last trip to Venezuela, it was a demonic mosquito because even when you are walking, they stick to your body and they continue to suck you. So you are in trouble. And I, don't, and I know that this is a country where they don't have medication for malaria. So every time I go to Nigeria, opportunity, I bring few so that I know that whenever I travel, I have to take it. Do you think it's pleasant? No, it's not. Do you think I'm enjoying the fact that I, I fly for about 14 hours and by the time I come down at the other end or the other part, my leg would have swollen and I would be doing exercise on one spot and still it's not enough. That could give me blood clotting, but I know that I'm doing it for a purpose, to show love to these people. What about that neighbor of yours? When was the last time you show love? Oh, we Christians have a funny attitude when it comes to, 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 to alcohol. We say, oh, I can't buy him or her an alcohol because I don't drink it anyway. Do you know that by doing that sometime, breaking what you don't do, you can bring some to, to Christ? Because they look at you different. They'll say, wow, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Let me share an example of Benny Hinn's daughter that was drinking alcohol to stupor and he, and he forced his father, uh, uh, his father to come with her to the nightclub with Pastor Bruce. And they said they went to the nightclub. He put the uh, Benny Hinn had to wear a face cap so that people will not recognize him. As soon as the daughter saw the father coming into the nightclub, he removed the face cap and was dancing like an harlot with the father. The father said, I have to enjoy humiliation to be able to win my daughter back. What humiliation have you enjoyed rather than criticizing? Oh, that's not what the Bible says. Is that how to win them? Or you want to go to another church to go and bring people from that church to come and hear a better message? That's what we do. When we see somebody that doesn't dress nicely like us, that doesn't talk nicely like us. We don't actually share with them. A Reverend Father on YouTube, this is on YouTube, go and go with it yourself. On YouTube, dressed like a madman on Sunday, and he stood at the entrance of his church in one of those, uh, um, uh, Eastern, 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 it's a Catholic, Eastern church, I think, uh, either Emo or thereabout. He stood at the entrance of the church and was collecting ham. Rather than them giving him money, they were sending, the, the ushers were sending him away to go away from church, not to pollute people that were coming into the compound. A Reverend Father did that just to prove what, what we do, how we do evangelism. We always like to talk with people of the same skin. Who told you that white does not need um, um, salvation? Our father and the Lord minister at a conference called Spring Harvest here last year. Predominantly white Caucasian. Come and see how people are weeping and giving their life. He is not called to the black community. He is not called to the brown skin only. He is called to the world. And this is what we should emulate. I am sorry that I am talking about this. This is my passion. And you, some of you know that. When it comes to evangelism, when it comes to mission, this is my passion. This is the area where I figure God has called me. And that is why I'm saying, let this love be your own passion as well. Because God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He demonstrated that love. Demonstrate your love. Sorry, let's go back. Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. We've read 14. Let's quickly move to 15. So that those who live should no longer live self-absorbed life. But leave, leave, but life that are poured out for him, the only one who died for us and now lives again. When was the last time you poured your life out for him? You pour your life out in worship. You pour your life out in, in, in evangelism. You pour your life out in giving. Not just give it to him, give it to others. When was it? When we say, let us pray, you mute yourself. We don't know if you are praying or you are eating. When we say, okay, unmute yourself, when we are even gathering, when we say, let us pray, some of you just be looking at him, you don't understand what it means to pray. And we say, we love him. 16. So then, from now on, we have a new perspective that refuses to evaluate people merely by their outward appearances 
for that is how we once viewed the anointed one. But no longer do we see him with limited human sight. 17. If anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. 18. And God made all things new and reconciled us to himself and given us the ministry of reconciliation. All that to God, not to go to another church for reconciliation. They are already been reconciled. They are attending church. They are sending service. One day, Holy Spirit will minister to them. But we have people around. Some of us are not working during this uh, um, lockdown. And they were asking for volunteers at Florence Gay Hospital. And we refuse to even put our name down. We refuse to go. Instead of I will be laughing and say, me, <laughs> me, I cannot just be infected. Is that love? And we have organizations like KLM that go around to be a volunteer, to be, to, 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 to be a volunteer in that hospital. They are not just only working in terms of in terms of faith and religious power, they are working. By praying around the whole building, and we have our prayer warrior as well. In, in, in terms of uh, uh, Pastor Pastor Ladimeji that was doing prayer work with the, with his team around the whole block. Yes, they are not volunteering as one of the people working there. But you remember, he's a medical doctor, so he was actually in the front front. He changed. He told, told the government that he's ready to work. And some of us have been blessed by cancer. By holding on to somebody and say, just hang in there. God will see you through. You are not going to die. And we will just refuse because we feel that we have nothing to offer. Stop deceiving yourself. You have a lot to offer. You have loads to offer. If you allow John 3.16 to become a personified to you, if you allow John 3.16 to make more meaning than just reading a word of Bible, if you allow John 3.16 to just become meaningful to you than just putting it in your head or in your in, 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 uh, and quote it without looking at the Bible, that's not important. What's important is you, you personify that scripture. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And look at the three things that he's telling you. He's persuading you that you have to love everybody. It's telling you that your passion is to bring in people that are outside of the gate into the inside of the gate so that they will know Jesus and they'll be able to walk with him. Sorry, let's jump. Read the rest of the scripture yourself because of our time. Let's quickly jump. I am convinced that God primarily means of showing his love is through his son, Jesus the Savior and the keeper of our soul. But once a person becomes a Christian, we see this in this passage that Jesus loved others through the life and service of the children. Can I be honest with you? Jesus, when you become a born again, your life transfer or your life become attractive. You become a light. And people that are not born again will be coming attractive to you because there is a light that is bringing them to you, and that is why they will speak to you. But some of us don't know how to handle it, and that is why we tell them to go away when they ask for prayer. That is why we tell them and we laugh and we say, You that you say you don't do God, you are, why are they coming to you? This is what you need to think. Why are they asking you this question? Why are they asking that you should pray for them? Why are they asking you about your faith? It's because you are becoming a light. They see that you stand out. And when you stand out, you become an attraction, a magnet that is bringing them. And when a magnet is bringing, it doesn't just bring every good uh, ion. It brings rusted ion. It brings ion that is almost done. When you drop a magnet in a sound, everything that is around the radius of that magnet power we attach themselves to it so this is who you are god loves through you show as a life and magnetize you and all sort of people will be coming to you but you don't need to send them away rather you need to feed them the lord will expand this word in your heart i don't know if you have communicated with you today but i am talking with passion that is in my heart that is in my mind what am i saying in all this where does all this lead if you if you will be used by god 
to affect and influence the lost to come to Christ, you must love them. And not just love them by telling them you love them so much, you must show the love. You have to go to extra mile. In one word, you have to perform your word. It is performance that can't. It is not what you pronounce with your mouth. Performance that counts. Do you know what? The other people of the faith, they are taking over this land by one weapon that they have. Can I tell you the weapon? Procreation. And they are using it. They say they are allowed to marry three wives. They will marry three wives. Each one of those wives will have four, four children. That is 12 that they are putting government to be responsible for. And as the 12 children, that is 12 uh, of them in one family. Now, remember, the, look at those 12 children growing up, either a, a female or a male, it doesn't matter, and they themselves have another 12 and all like that. So they are using procreation. They are using family to make sure that they evangelize the world that we are living. But what we have that is powerful than what they have is love, if we use it powerfully. Love will make you to pray for somebody that normally you wouldn't have touched. Jesus stand, uh, stood and looked at a leper. When the leper cried, the Bible said he placed his hand upon him and prays. And then healing came to him. Two things that Jesus did there, and I will explain it to you. Number one, he broke the law of Moses that said every leper must be in leprostrum. That is where they keep them and you should not even touch them. And when they heal, they have to go and bath in a river and do a sacrifice and then go and show themselves to praise. But rather, Jesus cut all those nonsense off and he just break the law by touching, by praying, and then telling, go and present yourself to the priest and take what Moses have commanded you to take along. That's what Jesus did. Man, let us learn if we say we are following Jesus. Let us learn, read Bible, learn from his example, learn from how he handled things. Not because my mouth is smelling, I come to you and you just put, take your head to the other side because you don't want to smell the, the, my mouth. In love, you can tell me that my mouth is smelling and I will understand what you are saying. In those days when I when, when I wasn't careful enough or don't know how to care for my for my mouth, when I'm fasting, everybody will know because my mouth is swelling. Thank God for people like my father and the Lord. Thank you for people like my wife. My father and the Lord will just say, don't you have a chingum there? I know what it means immediately. I know what he's talking about. And then I started, I went to dentist. What can I do? I don't want to eat chingum while I'm fasting. And he told me what and what to do. How? I need to put hygiene into my and that is what I'm doing now. So even when I'm starving, you don't know because there's no smell coming out. There's a way you can tell people that your mouth is smelling and they will actually appreciate you for it. Praise God. Please show your love. In conclusion, or as I'm concluding, because it can be two parts, it can be one part. Don't tell me you love me until you are first. Show me that you love me. Let us start with this pandemic. As of last night, I was feeling guilty that I've been unable to call all of you. And that's because I've been busy this week. I've been working. I woke up to Wednesday. And then when I came back, do some other things in the house and things like that. So I was, I was fucked out. And I feel guilty that I haven't called you to find out how you are doing. Can I ask you an honest question? When was the last time you called me to find out how I am doing? Love is reciprocal. Love is reciprocal. If I show you love, it is okay for you to show me love as well. And then when you even call me because I call, you say, I was Pastor Mrs. Don't you have a number? If she didn't pick up, send her a text. She will read it at some point. When I call, I call husband, I call wife differently. I don't call one and I said, I've called. No. I see each as an entity, and I call each as an entity, not uh, extend my greeting to Pastor Mrs. 
we, we are talking to ourselves. We are showing uh, what we are doing wrong. We are telling each other. Perhaps we believe that God, your God loves him when the time comes for him to be told. No, 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 no. You need to demonstrate, Lord. That is why people are running away from the kingdom. That is why people don't want to have anything doing with the church. What we are what's supposed to be our weapon to win people into the soul is the weapon that we are withholding and we are not demonstrating. Rather, we will say it with mouth when it is convenient. When they did something that we feel that wow, I'm impressed with what he has just done. I'm impressed with how he has just handled that. No, sir, no man. The moment you give your life, everything has become new. That love that that you are struggling to express will become easy for you to express. You are easily hug people. You are easily give people good high five. You are easily tell them you know I love you. You are easily showing not just not just uh, 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 by mouth, but they will see. Do you know one thing? We are spirit being. If you are lying to people that you say you love them, they know you are lying because something inside of them will convince them that you are lying. If you really want to understand that, take your children to a house or a family that they don't like. You will see their expression. You will know. And this family never said anything, but their spirit just didn't go with that family. And then you see the expression. My wife took Zoe to a family in the U.S., and as soon as Zoe got to the door of this sister, Zoe became restless. Zoe was crying. Zoe was until they left. Immediately they went back into the car. Zoe started smiling again. Not long after that, God gave revelation to my wife about that same sister. And then God said, that is why the do your daughter became restless. Rather, we will be beating them. We are not observing that they are spirit being. And because it's easy for God to communicate through them, we are too old. We, we have selected hearing. We want to hear what we want to hear. We don't want to hear everything that God is saying. So rather, we use your children to communicate with you. But rather, what do we do? We give them samba. I, say, don't, 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 don't. I am your mother. Where did I tell you to go? Is where you go. But their spirit is not actually clicking with that. Number two, as we should, as we should, the spirit of God work in the life of sinner. Perhaps it will even come to believe that God loves him enough to send his own son to die for him. And perhaps that sinner will someday come to Christ. If we continue to pray for somebody, if you continue to show love, one day it is not your 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 it is not in your power to bring anybody to Christ. That's the truth. And this is where we are getting evangelism wrong. It is not in your power to bring anybody to Christ, but it is in your power to show them Christ's love. And that love is what will bring them to Christ. Not in your power. No, you cannot. You can, and I mean it. You cannot convince a single individual to give their life to Christ. You can't. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Yours is just to plant a seed the seed you are planting is the word of God, and the action that follows the seed is the action of love. Leave the rest for the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. I am convinced that one of the missing ingredients in biblical evangelism, in addition to what the preacher is supposed to preach and then follow up and do, is what people are supposed to do, which is to love. In biblical evangelism, we just go out there, we give them track, we don't speak to them. Look at the last time that we had the evangelism training. And they force us not to use um, a track. Some of us felt like a fish outside of the water and we are struggling. But after some time, when we get warmed into what they were saying, we understood that it's not about track. It's about when we talk to people, when you give people an attention, when you speak to them, when you show love to them. Look at how many people gave their life as a result of what you, when we change and what we do. It is then that we ask, where do you have your church? And then we then give track as an address. Not God loves you, we give them track and they drop the tracks in the bin that is available next to you as soon as they leave your place. No. Now we learn a lot. Let's demonstrate. We can still do it. 
Yes, we are not meeting out uh, in that place. Yes, we are not going out for uh, evangelism, but we can still use our 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 our, 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 our WhatsApp. We can still use our Twitter page. We can still use our uh, our uh, IG page. We can still use our Facebook page. Facebook uh, network is where ninety percent, about ninety five percent of the world meets. Only 5% doesn't have a Facebook account in the whole world. Only 5%. That is according to statistics. Every other network like IG, like uh, Twitter, uh, they are just following. But Facebook will happen to be the first. Only 5%. And out of the 5%, only 2% never have the account. The three have been on it before, but they come out or they deleted their account. That's the truth. So what are you supposed to do? You are to love the lost. You are to love the sinner. That's what you are meant to do. That is how we can populate the church of God. God loves visitors. And when he visits, he visits to bless. When he visits, he visits to bless. My prayer is, as we go on Evangelism. Most especially Sunday, I pray that the Lord of God, the mercy of God, allow you, please mute yourself, whoever on the phone, mute yourself. So my prayer is God in his infinite mercy, we allow the love that we have to become what is called demonstrated love. What is called performance law? What is called the law that will bring uh, souls into the kingdom of God? That will bring the law that people will say, ah, of the truth. I met a believer. I met a born again Christian. I met someone that can help me. Can we just go to God and ask God that in his infinite mercy should help us to demonstrate his love more? Some of us want to do it, but we are being restricted in the spirit. Simply because we don't know how to handle it. Or we don't know how to handle disappointment because we have been disappointed before. Oh, just go to God. This is the period for you to go to God and just pray. Ask Holy Spirit to help you. That in this evangelism week and mission week, you will not be found wanting. Because he who is soul is wise. The only thing that can give you a star upon your crown in heaven is so winning. The number of life you brought, you, how you depopulate the kingdom of hell and increase the kingdom of heaven. This is very, very important for you and I. This is an assignment that God has given to both of us to do. So why don't you speak to God and say, Father, help me. Help me. Where I lack love, let I, I receive abundance of love in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive abundance of love. Go ahead and pray. Oh, just go ahead. Faith, just receive it. Abundance of love. So that you become generous in sharing the love. You become generous in showing the love of God. You become generous in saying, Father, I love you, for I know of the truth. You have given me the truth. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. I hope you are blessed by this message. Visit our website for further information. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook or even subscribe free on YouTube. God bless you real good.